Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus and I'm joined by... Alex Morel, the CMO of Neurogaming. So tell me a little bit about what Neurogaming is doing today, what you guys are showcasing, what you guys are doing in virtual reality. Okay, so we're all things virtual reality in entertainment industry, especially we're talking about location-based VR games. And uh, we are actually showcasing two products here in Brooklyn. One of them is Cinema VR. It's an easily scalable cloud-based solution for deploying your VR location. Cinema VR is primarily your go-to if you want to have a turnkey solution for opening up your own location uh, in VR to entertain your users. It services the complete cycle of what you need to do and things that you need to get done in order to deploy your location. Beginning from the selection of an area for your location and ending up with uh, servicing and retaining your customers. So it provides for content management, location management, it provides guidelines for the assembly of the location, personnel training, marketing. It also provides the proper pipeline for the contents. It has its own integrated CRM system and has uh, the capability of adding third-party ERPs aside from its own uh, built-in system. It helps you upsell and cross-sell because we're going to have uh, Within the nearest future, we're going to have the support for in-app purchases. What happens is that you get an end-to-end -end solution which you can operate like from day one. Because normally, one cinema VR location takes four to six hours to install. You need only one tech guy for the time of the installation, and then just three guys for the muscle, you know, to bring the whole trust structure up. Then that's it. Everything is done over the cloud. All the content is uploaded. All of the uh, firmware is uploaded. All of the hardware is being set up remotely. And then you just need one guy with a tablet that manages the. Uh, the location. So, you know, just by a couple of taps of the buttons on the tablet, the, the customer is registered in the pipeline. You get, uh, you get his data, you get him into the CRM. Then you have all of the statistics on what games the customer plays, what his preferences are, when it's time to follow up with him and to stimulate him to come back to do something. One of the first birds was uh, the Revolver. Revolver was a competitive shooter for four players, a Mexican standoff, it's highly physical. It uses a uh, tethered HTC Vive with two controllers, but you have to move because your body is the controller, or at least it's part of the gameplay, so to say. You have a uh, cover system, you have three other guys trying to shoot at you, and you need to shoot back. The one who uh, lands most headshots, the one who is the best shooter, actually is the, becomes the hotshot in the West. We um, had world's first location-based uh, VR tournament last year in November in Russia. So the winner of this tournament was a student from St. Petersburg and the guy won over $20,000 as the grand prize. So we figured out that this has some traction. It has the competitive edge. It keeps people attracted, keeps people engaged. Therefore, our next bird, which was in development in parallel and on the top secret conditions within our secret labs was World of Tanks VR. So this is a uh, highly intense tank combat for four players uh, on uh, a very specific map with a lot of nukes of crannies where you can ambush other players or you have like open areas where you can make go crazy and shoot everything that moves. The key points in tank combat, what we did is that we did a lot of R&D and we made sure that no one gets motion sickness of operating the tank. People are getting involved in, the, in, uh, in, in that, they compete with each other, they, have, they see the global scoring. We are trying to expand the experience so that people are not only engaged during the sessions when they put on the VR helmet and play with, with other players. What we're doing is that we're adding a social layer there, so meaning that uh, players can challenge other players. We, we provide a progression and achievement system. So when players reach a certain level within the game, they can challenge other, other players. Like for example, hey, I've been like the top shooter over the last weekend, so how about uh, you guys try to compete me and kick me off the, the, the mountain? I'm the king of the mountain right now. So, uh, king of the hill, rather. Uh, later on down the track, we're going to have in-game purchases. Like I said, when we have a critical mass of players within every location, we're going to introduce in-game uh, in purchases and content, which you can uh, interact with via your second screen, and then you can interact with it within the game. Like, for example, I don't know, you can have a golden tank or something, I don't know, like a, a custom camo. Say, our approach to uh, the arcade version is similar to what uh, Capcom did with Street Fighter, because they originally launched a, uh, an arcade version for the players to play with, with a certain portion of the content, so they balanced everything, they figured out uh, what uh, the difficulties might have been, they have overcome them, they've uh, crystallized it into a product which then went, went to the consoles and went really massive. Somewhere in between Q1 and Q2 next year, we believe we're going to launch uh, the version for the home consoles. 
home VR consoles. So right cinema now. VR, is that something that's only in certain areas that people can access, especially these, these types of content? So uh, the, the brick and mortar part of it, of it is, but the key, the key thing about cinema VR is the platform. So we're not about just having the locations and managing the locations. We're, uh, what we're building up and we're going to launch in June this year is a uh, platform as a service so meaning that you, you can have registered business users from any kind of a market who want to open up their own VR locations. They get access to all of the guidelines, all of the databases and marketplaces for hardware suppliers, for real estate providers, pipeline for content, for location management and everything, for uh, a reasonable subscription fee. So on a monthly basis you can, you can get the access to the service guidelines and everything. Open up your location, which is a top notch, which works well. You get the marketing guidelines and you know how to attract traffic. We're not planning on expanding our brick and mortar network. We're actually trying to expand the number of subscribers which we're going to have in the platform itself. You guys uh, will be upgrading and changing things as new hardware comes out as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, of course, we, 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 we will update the guidelines. We will, test, we will test all the hardware locally because we have the high uh, R&D capacity, therefore we, we stress test all the hardware prior for it to go into, into the market. Because there are a lot of markets in the world where um, home adoption rates is still high. I mean, ho home adoption threshold is still high, meaning that the users, they cannot afford themselves to have the VR kit and the rig that would run it. So location-based is like one of the entry points for those consumers. And that's why this business is ripe for entrepreneurs to come in and launch their own businesses right now. because. You know, it's like the renaissance of the arcade market itself. You, got, you mentioned that you might be working with TV series, with uh, films, and expanding into that area, and potentially working, I suppose, almost in a field of production? There, there, is, there, there are such plans. Like I said, we have the, um, the second product, uh, Polygon VR, and this is like a completely different thing and next level. So what happens is that you have a... Um, full body tracking system, you have um, a free roam area, but the key point about that is that you have uh, physical arenas that can be united via the server, and you have the, the built-in broadcasting and TV direction system, meaning that you have the video server integrated, where you can put on a TV director or a video producer, and he just produces the proper content on the go, while uh, people are playing. What inspired you to go into that direction and expand and go into production with virtual reality and mocap, I suppose, as well? It's, it's completely different. It is. The key thing is that, you know, we, um, most of the team, they have some media roots. So a lot of people are coming from television, from interactive media, from uh, various production spheres. And we figured out that the key points is that, for example, if you unite um, let's say like uh, film grade production value with the proper backbone of a server that allows you to you know, place your media and play around with it anywhere. Uh, and if you have the proper infrastructure to track player movements, you can unite various audiences. Like mix gaming with TV, with, uh, I don't know, like eSports. What you get is uh, the traditional TV audience gets together with the audience that normally watches eSports and you produce a completely new media product like that. Think um, Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it's on steroids in <laughs> VR and you have it right there. You have a collision course with a dramatic action with less, uh, I mean, with zero trauma uh, risks. But still, it's spectacular, and you can watch it anywhere because uh, our platform also has second screen support, meaning that you don't need to watch it on your TV. You can do it via your mobile, your tablet. And the funniest thing about it is, okay, think Hunger Games because <laughs> it's second screen support. With second screen support, what you do is that you can actually affect the gameplay, be the good Samaritan or not. Depends on uh, what kind, which, which team you support. Like for example, if this is like a team sport, you can buff the team that you support and you can debuff the team, uh, the enemy team. Um, or you can provide hints if this is like an escape room mechanic. So there is a limitless uh, field of possibilities. And the funniest thing is that we have all of the production available right now. We have all of the capabilities and we have the proper showcase that this technology works. That's why we're trying to bring in the AAA uh, franchise owners in order to gather that audience 
and you know, build up something new, something to revolutionize the, uh, the entertainment industry. So, so is that a platform as well, or is that hardware and software? It How is the platform. Okay, right. Like, uh, the, the key thing about it is that the platform, we're very software-centric, we're very R&D heavy in uh, developing the proper, I don't know, like, for example, data transfer protocols, meaning that, like, uh, today, we have the physical location in uh, New York playing with the physical location in Moscow with almost no latency and there'll be none by the time it's production value. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that we are completely hardware agnostic, meaning that when the new vendor comes in or there's a new product which provides higher fidelity or be better performance, we'll be the first ones to pick it off the shelf. Is it only two locations that you've got? No, we or? actually have two in Moscow. So we started with two in Moscow, now we have one in New York. In New York, the other one is going to be open in Amsterdam. And we're also working on a smaller scale, more mobile setup, so to say. We hope that we'll be able to deliver it uh, on GDC this year. So people are going to at least uh, test the technology and see how it works out. So wh what are you looking for to do with that with regards to creating new content? Are you looking for big IPs to be brought in? Are you looking for a, a sort of a new type of show to come out of it potentially? It's actually like a cascading set of events, so to say. So we work out the mechanics and of course we're looking to turn it into a media, a media show. We're looking into making it an esports format. And we're looking, it's it, considered like, we amalgamate the whole things, okay? We, we put them together and we combine media with esports with a show with uh, the user interaction. And of course you can use the, um, the production, the production facility, the, the, the arena as uh, location-based entertainment. So double the reusability. Wow, you guys are growing ever bigger <laughs> and expanding and you're looking to potentially go to Asia as well? Most definitely. We actually had a pretty good traction uh, last year in Japan with the Tokyo Game Show. And we're right now pipeline with uh, several potential partners in China. So definitely we're looking into all of those markets. We just do not know which one launches first, but most definitely we're, we're pretty sure that they will. So you have one platform, but how is it structured? So it's pretty easy. Actually, the, the platform itself is based upon our vast experience of managing number, a number of locations. Um, uh, Cinema VR itself, it has launched in December 2016. Right now we have over uh, 40 operating locations in Russia, and we have Russia's major uh, VR park. We are developing our own content in-house. We have 10 plus titles in the pipeline at the moment, and uh, we are pretty experienced in working with licensed content. For example, we have uh, been the licensee of uh, a, um, an international major producer of uh, cartoons. Therefore, we have uh, various content for um, a wide range of ages, like you, if you have small kids, it's very good for family entertainment because you can have, you can bring kids over, they can play uh, games ba based on popular cartoons. If uh, you want, to, let's say, if, if, if you want some kind of an edutainment, it's really nice because uh, the platform, it remembers children, it remembers the users, I mean, and uh, whenever the uh, child comes back, the characters recognize the child, they uh, well greet, it, greet the child and they can provide some extra uh, content to it, like, I don't know, new tools to play with and stuff like that. Since platform is still in development, we have a tremendous pipeline for franchise. Right now we have over 150 leads just in, uh, um, in various stages of uh, the pipeline, in the various stages of the funnel. But aside from that, we already have several franchisee uh, locations open in Russia, and we're, we're coming up with uh, about 15 locations in Spain. And there are going to be two um, locations coming up in Vancouver, Canada. Aside from interest from, uh, from Europe and the States, we'll also have uh, experienced some interest from uh, Middle East. So there's going to be several locations opening up in uh, United Arab Emirates because those guys really love their entertainment. Maybe there's going to be around 18 locations plus. I mean, the business is growing. We understand that we have a uh, stable up and running location-based entertainment business, but we're looking into going above the industry and becoming the infrastructural provider since we have such a tremendous traction. Uh, what would you say to viewers out there or devs out there when it comes to the next step or the next form of entertainment for virtual reality? Okay, I would say that uh, the key thing is to do not limit yourself with the hardware. Do not think about the physical portion of it. Think about the, the software. Think about the, it's, it's not the delivery, it's the format, it's the concept and it's the content. I believe those three are the kings of the future entertainment. 
Okay. Uh, where do we go to find out more information about what you guys are doing? Uh, for more information, you can check out neurogaming.global. That's like our main informational hub. We also have a YouTube channel and a Twitter channel. Great. Uh, head over to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more about virtual reality. And I'll see you there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.